Hey kids, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. And uh, welcome back to the channel for another bike review. And today, I'm a little bit late to the party to be honest on this bike. Today I'm riding the Honda XL750 Transalp. A bike that uh, has been around now for a little while. I don't know why it's taken me so long to jump aboard. Well, I do actually. I think it's because this bike is a big Dakar-esque trailer. Come on, lights. Goodness sake. And generally speaking, I'm not a fan of uh, Dakar-esque trailer type bikes in terms of the looks. We'll get onto that in a second. However, in the case of this particular bike, I was quite keen to give it a go because it reminds me a bit of the CB500X from Honda, which was a bike I like very much. And I've heard rave reviews about the trams out, so I was keen to give it a go. Anyway, stick around, stay tuned. Let's see uh, what I think of it. Alright, so welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Great Missenden. If you've ever wondered why I call myself the Missenden Flyer, it's because I live in Great Missenden. This is this village in South Buckinghamshire and uh, my other hobby is flying light aircraft. I'm a pilot, so uh, the Missenden Flyer to me summed up the sort of, I don't know, great steam trains of the Victorian era, that sort of thing. And also it kind of worked because of the flying and because you go fast on a motorbike. Anyway, that was kind of my my thinking behind it, but I digress, back to the Africa Twin. So Honda have had this thing, haven't they, the last few years of bringing back bike names from the past. Cute. Things like Africa Twin, is that what I just call this? This is of course the Transalp. But yeah, they uh, brought back the Africa Twin name, they brought back the Hornet name recently of course, and now the Transalp joins that uh, esteemed bunch of much loved bikes from Honda's past. Now before I get into the detail of what she's like to ride, let's take a look at a bit and uh, see what we think. Alright, well let's take a look at this beastie then and see if I'm being a bit unkind at saying I don't like Dakar-esque uh, style motorcycles. Now of course, whether you like the looks of a bike or not is very much a subjective thing, so uh, you might instantly just love this. But I have to say, normally I'm not a big fan of these um, bikes that have a massive, um, you know, up front screen and, and flat looking front end but in the case of the Transalp I think it looks all right actually you know it's quite it's not uh, you know an unattractive looking bike I'm, I'm, I'm quite taken by actually and in this um, grey scheme it looks really good it comes in a white uh, red and blue you know the typical Honda scheme with gold wheels which I really like uh, and it comes in a black version but I think it looks pretty good in all of them actually so quite surprised myself in the flesh this looks better than I expected uh, it's got some quite nice Transalp decalry there uh, as you can see the uh, the engine is all blacked out, which uh, is just nice, again, on this blacked out version. You know, on a black bike, it just looks good, doesn't it? Uh, it's got uh, not an unattractive exhaust. Sometimes these days bikes have massive red bins on the back, but that one looks all right. Uh, there are those tyres that look sort of off-roady, but they're not really. They're more on-road than off. Uh, they're the Dunlop Trail Smarts, I think. Uh, but, yeah, overall not as ugly a bike as I thought and one of the reasons why I hadn't ridden this uh, you know ha hadn't taken it out for so long was because I just thought you know what I don't like the look of the trans out but I don't think I'm gonna like it but now I've actually seen it in the flesh it's kind of grown on me and uh, yeah it sort of works so there we go that's uh, what she looks like let's get back on again see a bit more about how she rides okay welcome back to uh, riding the trans out then what does she like to ride well in a word, very nice actually. Let's face it, these days modern bikes are all pretty good, aren't they? So we're clutching at straws when we find things we don't like about bikes. But uh, let's go through how this one feels comfort-wise to start with. Well, you very much sit in this bike uh, and it is, a, it is a comfortable place to be. The things that strike me, somebody that's very much used to riding the uh, BMW GS, is that the handlebars feel a little bit narrower. Uh, than I would expect to an adventure bike. Only a bit, but that's something that I noticed immediately when I got on. The seat on here is quite hard actually, quite spacious, you can move around in it. But you're sitting uh, fairly upright. Let's just nip past this car. Love this engine. Loads of grunt in this twin. Yeah, you're sitting fairly upright. And uh, I honestly think you could ride for mile after mile on this no problems at all. The fuel tank feels quite wide between your knees, which surprised me, but uh, it feels quite comfortable to me. Just for reference, in case you don't know, I'm always telling people this, I'm five foot eight <laughs> and I've got a 32 inch leg, which apparently is quite long. But uh, although this is quite a tall bike, I can get my feet pretty much, hello gents, 
pretty much flat on the deck not quite but pretty much so uh, even though the seat height is tall at something like 830 mil we'll go through the specs in a sec don't be too afraid of it from a height point of view handles beautifully well through these uh, through these twisties actually a lovely comfortable ride and the suspension seems to be soaking up the bumps of treat the suspension on here is nothing particularly complicated or clever but at the end of the day this bike is a kind of a budget adventure bike it's the sort of bike that uh, you know if you did want to do a tour a long tour it'd be absolutely perfect for or indeed if you want to do a little bit of dusty off-road stuff for doing sort of dirt roads and things like that gravel tracks this would be absolutely perfect this one's fitted with uh, I think it's a Dunlop trail smart tires something like that and they look sort of off-roady but they're not really they're more on-road than off-road but they look they look the part on the bike but you could certainly do as I say the odd dirt trail now I'm not going to go off-road on this bike on this uh, first impressions review uh, not because the bike's not more than capable of it, but more to do with me. I've got uh, arthritis in my shoulders and I'm suffering from a sprained left wrist at the moment from uh, rescuing a nearly dropped motorcycle the other day. Well, I say the other day, it was about a month ago now. So actually standing up and riding off-road isn't a good idea for me, so it's a bit of a whinge. Sorry about that. So there'll be no off-roading on here, but there are other videos on YouTube if you want to see it off-road. I'm sure it's more than capable. Okay, well I said I'm not going to do any off-road on this uh, on this video, and I'm not because of my dodgy shoulders. But I do feel I should at least stand up on the... Uh, I was going to call it an Africa Twin again on the Trans Alp, just to see what the balance is like. And I have to say, it feels great. This nice wide tank, nice and easy to grip between the knees. And uh, your weight automatically kind of falls forward. So for me... At my five foot eight with 32 inch legs as i keep mentioning the handlebars feel right in the right spot i do notice they're on some quite big handlebar risers but yeah standing up on here works an absolute treat the other thing about this bike that struck me when uh, it rolled off the van and i wheeled it across my driveway is actually it is it is quite a big vehicle considering it's sort of a mid middle weight mid-size adventure bike don't let that fool you because it actually in terms of its physical size it's pretty large and it's pretty tall I found it quite hard to move around the driver a little bit ponderous actually which I was surprised by I thought it would feel quite light but it, it doesn't so that's a black mark I'm afraid right let's just go down my favorite little handling road here now with nothing behind me let me just try the brakes that's definitely nothing behind front brake is nice works very well but my goodness me there's a lot of fork drive let's just try that again well yeah good stoppers but uh, the bike does pitch forward an awful lot when you brake let's try the rear oh the rear is very good actually suspension on here as i say fairly basic but it's uh, for my weight i'm around about the 11 stone mark it feels beautifully set up actually this road is notoriously bumpy as i'm sure the 360 camera is showing you but actually from a riding perspective it's feeling smooth through the trans alps suspension and apologies if i keep calling this an africa twin because it does remind me very much of that bike all right before we get more into the riding let me uh, quickly whiz you through the spec okay let's whiz through the numbers on this bike then starting with the engine that we've seen before as i say in the honda hornet 755 cc uh, 270 degree uh, crank parallel twin sounds and goes really nice puts out around about 90 brake horsepower at 9500 rpm and 75 newton meters of torques the front wheel on this is actually a uh, 21 inch to uh, give you a bit more off-roadiness and uh, as you can see the brakes on here twin 310 mil discs on here uh, nice pedal discs and two pot calipers on the rear you've got this a single 256mm disc and I'm glad to say the single pot calibre is at the top of the disc so it's not going to catch all the crud in it. Sometimes you get them mounted on the bottom and I don't understand why bike manufacturers do that but not in this case. Seat height on the Transalp is pretty high, 850mm but as I say I can actually get my feet pretty much flat on the deck at 5 foot 8 with a 32 inch leg. Suspension on the Transalp, on the front end we're looking at Showa 43mm upside down forks with 200mm of travel. On the back end, that monoshock gives you 190mm of travel. 
Weight of the Trans Alp is 208 kilograms curb weight, so that includes some fuel and some uh, fluids. So I'd say that's pretty manageable for an adventure bike. Tank capacity on the Trans Alp 19.6 litres. Electronics wise on the Trans Alp, you've got uh, five riding modes. Uh, ABS of course and traction control, this TFT connectivity, self-cancelling indicators and LED headlights. You've also got a USB-C socket. Worth noting, you may not be able to see them uh, with this camera, but you have got these uh, front indicators that are LED and they operate as uh, daytime running lights. Price of the bike, £9,499 according to the Honda website, which I think is a lot of bike for the money. OK, so much for what the bike's like on paper then. Back to the real world riding. I've got this in standard mode at the moment it has got a lot of riding modes on here but if I flick through them so standard is the one that it's on when I started the bike rain which is always handy gravel useful if you're doing that off-road stuff a user mode where you can set all the parameters up yourself and sport I'm gonna leave it in sport now and just see if there's any noticeable difference a quick overtake with the white van yeah it does feel a bit more peppy on the throttle actually but not a huge difference it seems between sport and uh, standard mode but it is a lovely lovely engine on here I can't believe that on the left was another closed road there's so many closed roads at the moment it's untrue something i do like about bikes like this is that they can take you down the roads less traveled uh oh bit of a uh, traffic issue i've never been down this road in my life but when you see a road like that you think i wonder where that goes you just ride down it and enjoy and even if you're not bogging off around the world for a couple of weeks you can have an adventure on your adventure bike you know, looks like a bit of white van issue up here what's going on if you are going to do the roads less travel though and have a bit of an adventure in your own backyard then don't bother coming to the southeast because <laughs> you'll just get caught up in traffic or stuck behind a white van it's the usual stuff this windscreen's doing a good job actually keeping the air flow off my face I'm, I'm feeling nice and protected here just as well because that screen doesn't appear to be adjustable but yeah for me the airflow is above my above the top of my head so works a treat what a fun bike around the corners this is it feels planted and agile it's uh, one of the things I loved about the Hornet was it was just a fun bike well this is very much that a nice warm day and the, the grip on these tyres around the corners is very confidence inspiring sounds great that engine as well it's got some proper character about it by which I don't mean it's all vibrate -y. in fact it's lovely and smooth it just it just does sound good it's not obnoxiously loud but it lets you know that you're you know having fun on a motorcycle brilliant Alrighty, what about uh, switch gear? Quite straightforward. Something I love about the uh, the Honda is it uses this sort of, I don't know what the Honda call it, but I call it a control vein. So it's got this big proud vein that you can move left and right with your thumb and then to, get to, to move up and down you've got these buttons top and bottom. It's very, very easy to use in a gloved hand. So many motorcycle manufacturers get that wrong by fitting fiddly joysticks or buttons that you can't really feel that you've pressed. BMW do it great with their whiz wheel. Well, second only to the whiz wheel is this vein control method. Really easy to use. I love that. And then other than that, it's all very simple switch gear. But you know when you've pressed it, it all works well. As does this little TFT. It's, uh, it's quite small, but it's lovely and clear. It's got everything you need, including a proper fuel gauge. I do rather like that, actually. Everything you're looking at here is quite simple so that you know there's not too much to distract you from the pure riding pleasure on this bike which is something it has in abundance I have to say clutch feels lovely and light gearbox I've not missed any gears and I've not had any false neutrals it's easy to find neutral really for a bike that's uh, just that smidge under 10 grand I think it's an absolute winner now can I go up this road I hope so appear to be closed for once thank you sir just check me 360 camera still attached it is good I'm 
liking this a lot. I've been quite surprised by it actually. I mean, if I was to give it a summary then on this first impressions review type ride, okay, I've not ridden it for days on end. I haven't done hundreds of miles. It's just my first ride on the bike. The first off the looks a bit very subjective thing, but actually I, I prefer, you know, I like the looks of this more than I thought I was going to in the flesh. It's actually quite a handsome bike and I didn't think I'd say that about a Dakar S bike. I shouldn't have left it as long. Riding wise, I cannot fault it. The suspension is set just in that Goldilocks zone for me. Not too hard, not too soft, it's great. So I don't care that it's fairly basic. At my weight and size, it, it feels great. Comfort wise, it's pretty good, except the seat feels a little bit hard. I don't know how that would fare long distance, but it's spacious. It's physically a large bike, much larger than I thought. And that, I guess, also is a bit of a downside because the, the one downside of the bike that I've found so far is it's a little bit ponderous moving it around at standstill. Not when you sit on the bike, that's fine, because you can get your feet on the deck and, and it feels secure. But it just feels a little bit top-heavy moving it around my driveway. I didn't feel that confident with that, and that might be actually partly to do because I've got this fear of my sprained wrist, which hurts, and I don't want to put a lot of weight on it. But it just felt a little bit top-heavy for me moving it around. Not terribly so, but enough to make me think, oh, got to be careful when you shift this around. So if that's important to you like it is to me, you might want to bear that in mind. But if you're a bigger guy and you don't have a sprained wrist, that's not going to be an issue at all. I mean, at this price point, it's got all the electronics you need. In fact, it's got more. It's got more riding modes than you probably need. It's got the connectivity if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not personally, but it's there if you want it. And if you can manage to get it to work. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a degree in computer science, but I've yet to get connectivity to work not on this bike specifically but on any bike in a reliable manner i can get it to work intermittently but that's it so uh, you know take that as you will but yeah other than the moving it around on the driveway there's nothing not to like it's comfortable it looks good it rides well it's got a beautiful engine you're not lacking in any power just because it's not over a thousand cc i tell you there's plenty of real world grunt here and for me, I think that, that engine is the highlight. It's an absolute peach. So once again, Honda have come up with the goods. Thank you, sir. I mean, these days you are hard pressed to find a, a bad motorcycle. So you have to kind of grade them, you know, assuming they're all good. Well, yeah, this is good. But how good is it compared to some other bikes? Well, as I said at the start of the video, it reminds me of the CB500X a bit, which I really loved. And that bike is something like six and a half grand. An absolute bargain so there is a bit of a question mark goodness there is a bit of a question mark about why would you have if you're just a road rider like me why would you have this over the CB 500 X that's a good question in fact I'm not sure I would <laughs> but if you do want to do a bit of off-roading there's no doubt the extra riding modes the gravel riding modes the extra grunt you get on this bike it's going to be attractive to you. But yeah, nice one Honda. Thank you to Honda UK for making the bike available to me. I'm glad they did. Thank you to you for watching, as ever. If you've not done so before, or yet, do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to have you along on the next video. Alright, until then, this has been the Mr. and Flyer. Cheerio. I do like being lost on a motorcycle. I know I'm not very far away from home, but I'm not entirely sure I am. Ah, now I do. Let me take you up this way and show you a little place called the Lee. There's not much to it, basically. It's a, a green with a pub, and that's about it. But it's been used a lot in things like Midsummer Murders, that, that sort of caper because it's sort of typically English, as indeed, of course, just looking at it around here, it very much is in this area. It's a lovely part of the world. Even better if the sun was to come out again. But never mind, you can't have everything. Actually, it feels really good down these lanes, the uh, Trans Alp. I've got this suspension just sorted right for my weight. Feels great. Sneaky left-hander here. Nice barn there. Very nice. And I think, yeah, here we come. This is the little green I was talking about. Commonly known as the Lee. And 
nice is that? Oh, some beautiful gardens to my left. And there's the pub. The Cock and Rabbit.